class with Mr. Patrick Oduma. Okay, so the Business Master class is a leadership and business firm aimed at advancing business innovation, sharing insights, knowledge, and educating individuals, startup entrepreneurs, and business owners from life experiences. So we so we listen from our mentor and try to make decisions based on his own experience and expertise. Okay, so the next voice we'll be hearing is that of our mentor. And he'll be taking us through the topic for for um, October edition, the D dot D of business. So with a warm welcome, let's welcome Mr. Patrick Oduma. I'm excited. Um, good evening to everybody. Dr. Momo Udwakabasi, good to see you again. It's been a while. Choma Sunday. Um, Victor, it's nice to see you. Lillian, it's a good to see you. Daniel, thank you for joining. And the rest of other people that I can't see. I hope we're doing well. I'm fully committed to this. It's not a show. It's not. Um, it's not a notice me. Um, it's not relevant. It's not lack of what to do. Um, it's not lack of um, association. I had them um, growing up, like all of you know that I was raised in the mud. And uh, my target is to live in the marbles. And it's been a journey, a journey of life. And I can see progression. And since we started Standout, my life have, um, I don't know how to say it, but it is, it's an amazing leap. It's such an amazing leap. I've double figures. Um, I'm becoming a better manager. I have more masteries of the business. Above all, I'm fearless. I'm not afraid to lose money if there's anything like that. I'm not afraid to um, take risk. And, and, and I'm, I've really improved. And I'm grateful to God. There's a whole lot of commitment. There's a whole lot of engagement. There's a whole lot of developing my mind, culturing my mind. But let me tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing. So um, sometimes in my life, my elder brother was dying. And my elder brother was, um, was such a cover for me. And when he was dying, you know, I prayed. Accidentally at that moment, I was the, the head of the prayer unit in my church. And I vow, you know, that nobody will die in my, while I am there. And I could see that the burden of the church was me, but my brother was going to die. So I held on to my brother until God said, let him go and eventually died. And in the process of that, I had made a commitment to say, God, if you increase me and enlarge me, that I'm going to show people, I'm going to share my experience without any form of reservation, without any form of charge, without any form of importance attached to it. But I was going to tell them that it is possible to serve God and become so wealthy and become so influential, not just by the things, but by impartation. So part of what I'm doing is fulfilling that mandate and that vow that I make to God. And sincerely has brought me from zero. Like I told you guys, I mean, I was in this town. I didn't have a place to, to squat. I was living practically in the car. And um, I, didn't, I couldn't even afford to pay rent. 
But today, I live in uh, the best part of the city, one of the best parts of the city. And my office is also within that zone as well, too. And so when I'm talking about this, it's just to encourage everybody that is a process. If you believe in yourself, if you believe in your dream, if you believe in the people God has given to you, and if you believe in your God, hey, you can also experience the same dimension and much more. And that's why I'm sharing this because, hey, everything I did was self-development. Everything I bought was dumbbell and dumbbell, you know, with dexterity, with commitment, with reading and all that. I, I couldn't find true mentorship who could live, you know, by the books, by the rules, by what they said and all that. So on a daily basis, I'm watching what I said. I'm watching my action. And that's why I find it um, easy day in and day out to ensure that I share those experiences. And they are evident to that. You can testify by what you see around me for the past three years. And so today we had done with um, um, the currencies. We, we, we talked about business profits. Don't look for money, look for profit. And today I want to be able to break it down, whether you're working, whether you have a business, whether you work in an organization, whether you intend to be a business owner, and whatever it is, but these things are crucial. Whether Where you are, if you apply them, you're still going to get the same results. And things are shifting after COVID-19. It is important. Um, I will start by sharing a testimony of what happened to me today and why it is important. Um, so I walked into a house. I visited the house. And as I was climbing, and I realized that at the staircase, it was very dirty because there, there were cobwebs. And I was wondering, by assessment, that cobwebs would have been there for over a year. And people on a daily basis walk past through that staircase and they may not notice it. It may not make a difference to them because of what we're about to deal with today the business did it. And if you can get it, trust me, you can lay hold on your business and you can advance them. You can increase the quality, you can increase the frequency, you can increase the profitability. And, 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 and it was amazing. And the first thing that I wanted to do was to say, please, can you give me a broom so that I can get it done? But unfortunately, I didn't want to embarrass them or to say anything because it wasn't my space, but I acknowledged it. So when I got back into my house, as I stepped into my sitting room, by just mere observation, I realized that the cleaner has shifted the table and it wasn't aligning. And frankly, I, I was so shocked. As soon as I get into that space, I found out there was something wrong and I went to realign it. Now, this is not OCD. Please, it's not, it's not perfection because I didn't have to quarrel about it. I didn't have another person to, oh, why didn't you do that? No, that is how the way I work. That is the way that I reflect my business. Um, it's no longer a cliche when I say that every morning I make my bed. Unfortunately, if, if for by any reason anybody makes my bed, I know that there's going to be a difference. Because, I mean, the detail of the line of the, the shape of the, um, what's it called, the pillowcase, it's always different. And I will notice the line and look at the shapes. Why? Because it's something on, yay, I have done. And now I can reap the benefit just by perception, not by feeling. And that's also how this works in business. I mean, I walk into my office most times, and I just knew that somebody has stolen money. Or somebody is funny. Sometimes I allow it to go. Sometimes, okay, I will dig into it. And they'll be short how I got to know. I'm going to say another story today. So today I called one of my colleagues who is in the field. I just wanted to catch up with what was going on. I usually don't do this. I allow them to be independent, to run the show. 
But today I went on, you know, just to check up with them. And, you know, we talked and I, I was passed to appreciate that person. And he came back to me and said, oh, you're the best boss. This just happened a couple of minutes ago. Why am I saying this? What I want to talk about is business detailing. Business detailing and delegation. Business detailing and delegation. Detailing is an act. It's a process or is a result of detailing something such as a small design element. Design element. Now, um, if you bring two of your shirts right now and check the one you bought overseas and check the one you bought in a bar, there's a difference. They have the same material. They have the same machine, most likely. They have the same thread. But the difference is detail. The difference is detail. And detail is so important that in business world, if you're not detailed, I, I, I went to visit um, a client yesterday and they were analyzing tenders and they have submitted a whole lot of tenders. And there was this particular gentleman or this company, very big, mighty and everything. They are, they are, they are good. But they were not detailed. And one thing that was key in that tender preparation, maybe sometimes I will talk about tender preparation and you know um, how um, contracting uh, done maybe in the new, near future, how I want um, businesses, you know, contract and all that. So they were not detailed and they leave on assumption. They think that they know everything. And they left out crucial thing. And those crucial documents that they did inside disqualified them. And now they are going to go to court because they will feel that, oh, nobody should pass that pen tender process, if not them. But unfortunately, they were not that detailed to be able to scrutinize, review, and review and review again, or probably bring an expert who will be able to detail. And the same thing that we were, were, we were involved in it, um, in as much as we went through a process, I mean, when we were doing this detailing, we had to put like about three systems. And so this system will bring out the requirements. This will bring out the skeletal work, and this will bring out the other one. And we have about five people who were cross-checking this. And eventually we ran it again and we brought in an expert just to have a third eye because the third eye could see what we're not seeing because when you prepare a document, because you already have those things segmented in your heart, you may think that you've done it, but an external person will take it from a different eye and look at it review it and pick up what your mind couldn't pick because your mind was involved. So the root word of detailing is, is from detail. It's an individual or fact of item. It's a unit. It's attachment. It's called troop. It's, 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 it's outfit. Now detailing is um, associated with when you talk about the military. If you look at the military formation, if you've been in the military, went to military school, secondary school, or some sort of thing, you find out that they are so detailed about the lining. If you're a military guy, maybe especially a ghost guy from the Navy, you realize that they are lining, the lining of their pants is amazingly different from the police. I've, I've, been, I've been in both of them. They pay attention to that detail. And that because if anything happened on the earth, that's why I see the, the, the pilot, they don't, they don't um, in any way, not at all. They do not in any way 
um, not check their book. If you're close to if you're if you're close to pilot in the cockpit, they do not mistake anything. They go back to their book, no matter how many years they have flown and, and the belt. They will check the book. Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Every unit complements all the attributes joined together. And if you miss one, they will not connect. So that is why that gives you what they call the full information. So for you to grow your business, the first thing you need to know on that is that improvement and growth is funded by detail. Improvement and growth is funded by detail. If you're not detailed, you may not grow. You may think that you're growing, but honestly, you're growing in volume. But in structural wise, the structure cannot contain it. And that's why if you're doing business like distributorship, you realize that people can as when will go as far as much they could to remove cartons, content of cartons. And you think that the cartons still have content. And meanwhile, they've extracted the content. So if you just go in here, you're counting the cartons. Sometimes open the cartons to check. That's half math. So that's why I say improvement and growth is funded by detail, what they call business details. And, and the root of detail, ladies and gentlemen, is commitment and consistency. It's a lifestyle of an entrepreneur. So you do not in any way neglect it. It's something that has to imbibe in you is a culture. And that's why I said, if you form the habit, it becomes a system in your heart. So it's very easy. But you struggle if you don't have a habit that you have, like I said, like I do my bed every day. And that has helped me to pay more attention, to be sensitive. That's why, because I'm committed to it and I've been consistent with it. So commitment and consistency is what will finish it. That brings in that perfection because Commitment means I need to, it's something that I'm involved. Involved in. Sorry. Ah. Commitment and consistency. You need to be able to develop your mind strongly and commit to it. Now, part of it is also hard work and focus. Hard work because it takes hard work, mental, mental mind to be able to stay detailed. Um, I walk into one of our sites when I was, I was a business development manager. Um, I needed to go deeper in understanding our business so that I can speak to my clients from the operational point, um, not just from the business angle. So I went, I paid a visit to a site. On one of those sites, we got a consultant. And uh, the consultant was um, probably doing the wrong thing because he wanted to um, escalate the number of days that he was going to perform the, the, the task. And he was doing absolutely things. So he will come and bamboos me and, and say all kinds of things. But growing up, I had grown up with seeing my mom do a process pump kernel, you know, get oil, pump oil. And so from the sequence of cutting the palm, palm, palm from the palm fruit to the point of incubating it, to the point of extracting it from everything and all that, the end process. So I was able to know the sequences and the seasons, how it works. So when I got into this place and the guy was trying to bamboozle me and because I was detailed understanding how the process of this palm kind of worked and it was the same concept. And I told the guy, no, I think you're doing this the wrong way. And what I did was I brought in 
the sequence. I say, do this, do this. I removed my tie and I asked for a cover roll and I took over that job. And I told the guy, I'm giving you five days. I'm going to be on this job and I will make sure that I finish this job in that five days. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how I moved into what I'm doing today in oil spill response and uh, remediation because I was so detailed understanding the process and today there is nothing you're going to tell me um, on response that I will not give you a full understanding and the sequential order by which these things are done. So it requires hard work and focus. And now this is one of the things that may be lacking also in detailing and people don't understand character. I'm interested suddenly, I become very interested in character content of business owners, entrepreneurs and workers and everything. Character is very, very key in detailing. Listen, when you steal money, you lose, you lose, you lose character and it, it doesn't give you wholeness. Character brings you wholeness because you need wholeness to be focused. You need wholeness to pay attention. And that's what I want to tell people, shortcuts, not necessarily Okay. Once again, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Seems like Mr. Patrick has network issues. He'll be joining us shortly. Shortly. So just hang on there. Mm. Mm. So I will wait for him to come back. If there is something that he has said, stay detailed. And character matters. Okay, character matters. I hope we are taking note of everything that is being said. It is a business master class. This is a class we are yet to learn. So we should be taking notes to, and not just to take notes, but whatever we're taking notes, we're taking actions to turn the notes into action points that we use to achieve the things that we need to achieve. So please take notes, take notes, yeah. Pen and paper, take notes. It is very important for us to take notes. Okay, so he is back. So Mr. Patrick, and then back over to you. Mm -hmm. When I watch him, I realize that he, uh, there's something about character, about his intensity and his uh, explosiveness. You see, I, 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 I'm a business, I'm a business, I was a business development manager. I was so detailed, that's what, that's what, I, I didn't plan to own a business, trust me, I didn't even know I would come this far. But I can attribute my success or where I am today because I pay attention to detail. No, I'm still working on it, it's not perfect yet, but on a daily basis, I'm growing because it's a lifetime, it's a process, it's not, it's not an event. Is a it's it's an ongoing thing because that will help you to talk about st patterns, structures, and system. If you work under the whole world, we are in a systematic flow that creates order. And now, order. If you hear me a lot, you talk about I talk about so much about order. It's so important when you are a pattern and you structured your business and you have system and. This is one of the things that is helping me in my business because um, growing the business, so I was the business manager 
I was operational manager. In fact, I played the role of an accountant. Uh, my boss couldn't uh, employ um, a cleaner. So I have to do the cleaning with my tie when I come back to one could talk, come to work. I clean my office and um, you know make sure that I keep it well because I was the only one. I was also loading and offloading materials. And that's what uh, my next step is to get involved and organized, get involved. You can't say you're a detailed person if you're not involved in the process. I was so involved in accounting, in marketing, in oppression, in, um, in auditing, in reconciliation, and stuff like that. I mean, I could see that even while I was in a bank, I was the first person that, because I was, when we recruited, uh, they, they, they put me in the system department. And so once you are in the system, you can move from the system to main operation. But I was so detailed in my disposition at the bank that I was the first person that moved out from that system to the main banking. So it's a lifestyle. Now, at that moment, it was, I didn't even recognize how helpful these will help me in my business. So get involved and get organized. Be everyone. You need to be everyone in the business. When I was managing my my auntie's um, hotel and bar, I wake up in the morning. There was a process, so I wake up in the morning, you know, prayer, and I would go to clean, sweep. While I'm sweeping, I remember that I need to get get some goods. I need to get some goods. I get to get a drink. I'll get everything ready, and I'll finish cooking. I'll get my blood. And I'm, I'll, I'll change and I became the operational manager, the business manager. And that thing has helped me also today see that it becomes a habit to get involved because you need to be everybody, everyone. You need to be the accountant. Um, it's just like our president. Our president is everybody. Now, the ministers will get everything ready for, for him. He had to speak from finance. He had to speak on education, he has to speak on legal, he has to speak on everything too. He has to be everybody. He has to be the ministry of this, ministry of this and all that. And that's how an entrepreneur should work. Understanding the mood and the feelings, the frustrations, the need. And the frustrations. You see, when you participate with objective, not the objectivity is to empower your leadership. It's different than when you are participating in order to condemn or in order to show that you're on top of your business. No. So you can connect with the feelings. So most times I want to be the security man so that I'll be able to understand their feelings, their mood, their frustration. Most times I need to go to check the toilet of the security men. Let me tell you, when top guys, uh, maybe top company want to uh, do audit, especially in HSC matters, they will, they will know that the managing director's toilet will be clean. They want to audit you from the place that you least expected. They will go straight to the security main um, toilet. I mean, I had that experience. This particular gentleman from Shell, when he was doing all this, he said, hey, I'm going to check. Where's your security man? Where's your... Uh, so we went there. Only God saved us. I think I had just checked that thing that the previous day and they cleaned it and moved everything. Look at that embarrassment. How many times do we take time to go to the least please and check whether things are in order? We're more focusing on where people will see. 
But the true test of your organization and order is the representation of the excellent spirit in every department. So it's important not to leave any of those um, inconsequential places unattended. That will give you what I call the emotional upstage. One of the things that happens about in, on entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs is because they have an idea. So they disconnect once they got, get into the office and the office is not in alignment to their ideals. They are emotionally unstable and all throughout the day. But now when you are detailed, everybody knows that you're detailed. And once they come in to that organization, so let's say I'm working in, 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 in a hospital, for instance, and I'm focusing on um, the work. But you know that the toilet is a source that if you take care of within that hospital, then you would have taken care of all the wards as well. But so you're focusing on the world, how beautiful they are, but the inconsequential parts keep upsetting you. And what it keeps upsetting you, it affects your performance, it affects growth. And that's why it's important for us to be so detailed to manage our emotion. And detailing will give you what I call the clarity of mind. At least you could be sure that things are going well. And one of the things I found out in is that they are so concerned about making money, but internal organization are not well taken care of. They, they, they don't know how the staff feel. I mean, I'm going to do something on Monday. Um, I realized that the energy in my office is dropping. And I'm going to, I'm taking responsibility. I don't want to give um, excuse. I, I, I'm, I'm able to do that because of my emotional upset, because I work with energy. Uh, that's what I call the brand realization. It is in the brand realization have these detailed functions into full gear. Once your mind is corrupted with anxiety, with worry and all that, it affects the power of detailing. And that's why you have to be present consistently. I, I don't mix emotions with my business. Maybe for instance, there's something that happened with my security man or Maybe my child or some sort of thing. I'm not really sure what's going on today. I'm so sorry. Um, maybe I'll just quickly run this. You need to be, you need to learn to be present. You need to be learned to be present at that moment. And that brings you by a lot of um, mindfulness. And one of the ways I do this mindfulness is. I find a way to create, to be cheerful. Sometimes if I get into my office, I'm dancing and I'm really dancing. There's nothing to dance and I'm just dancing. I empty up myself because I want to be detailed in the business. So there's cheerfulness. Now, so part of the detailing is bookkeeping. A lot of us do not keep our books. And once you don't have a business book, that you record to know debit and credit, to know asset and liability. You need to detail when your staff or when you get to the office. It's not show, it's not guy. Writing your name when you get into the office space matters a lot. If there are legal implications, they are going to check the attendant. It's important, starting from attendant, 
record your performance, record your book. Make sure that you have proper record. Especially now, let me tell you one of the things that's going on. As a business grow, like I said the last time, don't forget that you are a child of the government. Now for us, it will shock if you don't keep your record well. Maybe for you've done business for three years and you've not got tax and you didn't keep your record. And now you want a particular business and they'll ask you to bring your tax and the tax officers will come. They will start asking you for this record of two years back. And because you do not have a system that record all your transactions, your banking transactions, your contracting and all that, and they look at you, they will take advantage of you. A lot of people have, their business have gone under because they were not detailed, because they, they lack of bookkeeping. It is important. It is important to record your salary because the tax people will come. Industrial fund, uh, a, a trading fund, ITF, they will come. It's so important that you keep your record. It is amazing, please. Bookkeeping, you can't avoid it. I think it was on, on Friday yesterday, we have the international, um, the ITF, they came to audit us for four years, since 2014. They need to see our record. They need to see our salary. That is why if you are a director and owner of business, please pay yourself a salary. document it if you don't pay yourself just assume that the business that's why you need to keep it and every take advantage Can you see her? Yes, it's we can. breaking, it's breaking, okay, but we can. can still hear you. Okay, yeah, fine. Sorry. Now, so account accounting is very important. And now accounting will help you to do reviews of your process and policies and procedures and letters. Let me tell you, if you don't read your letter, that letter can implicate you. As much as your secretary or whoever, your colleague has sent you a letter, you know, some of us just sign. You get a contract. You don't read the contract, the terms of the contract. That's part of detailing. That's part of detailing. So you need to have, make sure you review. So you review on the, be involved in the process, be involved in the planning stage, be involved in the execution stage. No matter the independent attribute you have, please pay attention to human energy. I picked up, I sensed up when my colleagues are sad. When I get to the house, I can literally pick up the state of the house. Are we still on, right? Are we still on? Yes, we are. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, great. sir. We are. Yeah. Pay attention to atmosphere. Your office atmosphere, your business atmosphere, there's a sense of the atmosphere you need to make sure you pay attention. Once you think that things are changing, ask yourself a question. You need to pay attention to small details, including your eye contact, eye contact, including the voice, including appearance, your own appearance, the office appearance, the business appearance. They will give you a whole lot. 
And that will lead me to the, 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 the last stage, which is delegation. Delegation is to give a particular job and duty or right to somebody else so that they do it for you. You cannot grow without delegation. You can never grow. Right now, I have um, four offices now, right? Yeah, four. I run one in Ohafia. I run one in Uyo. I run one in NTA Road. I have one in 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 the GRA. So four offices. So you see now, if I don't delegate, I cannot. We cannot expand the business. So for some of you who want to control the resources of your business, everything around you, you may not be able to expand it. If you watch what happened with Moses, Moses was the only leader, was a judge. He couldn't expand the territory well until the father-in-law walked in and said, hey, you will die. And now he distributed it, that's formation. That's the way, the same way military formations are done. That's the same way banks, you know, would detail their business and be able to create policies that drive it within the branches. Why? Because they want to give, you know, the job description. One of the things I like about detailing and delegation will give you where you don't leave anything by chance. If you employ a secretary, make sure you detail her responsibilities. It's called job description. If you don't have one, please write for yourself. Make sure everybody have a job description. Job description just defined our rules. So you won't say oh, this person is doing it, this person is all to do it. And what's the, what's the benefit of job description? Number one, we achieve more with less time. With delegation, we achieve more. If you want to achieve more, please delegate. Delegate means don't trust people don't, you know, say, I don't trust them. They will steal money. The simple question I'll ask, so all of us have stolen one way or the other, whether you like it or don't like it, whether it's your time or some level of something. Oh, I do not encourage you because we didn't know. But I'm saying, you can't say you don't trust people. It means that you don't trust yourself. So trust yourself to trust people. So what I call it, I've qualified people in order to be qualified. If you don't qualify them, they can't be qualified. So delegation will give us to achieve more with less people. And that's why now I am achieving more because I have more people in my organization. So I've distributed my spirit among the other people and we're catching it because we are detailed. We have, we pay attention to details. The second thing it gives you is continuity with sameness of mind. That's what they call the teamwork. If you don't have a teamwork, in fact, it got so bad that when I, I was in the office, I will, I will function in, as a team. I divided myself into four structures. And so I'll be an accountant, I will record, I was giving my boss, my boss was in Lagos. Every month, I will catalog all the expenses, I will do balance, uh, check, uh, you know, just put a structure. And it was working and we could measure if there's anything that was missing we could pick it up because we were detailed. So continuity with sameness of mind, teamwork. Number three, it will establish a trust culture. If you don't delegate, you won't be able to establish trust culture. And that's when you'll be able to, you know, review. That's when you're able to empower everyone. So it's important we delegate. It brings efficiency. Without delegation, you model up. And the last one, it brings a lot of flexibility because now you have more people you delegated and these people have potential. These people have insight. These people have connections. I mean, my, my, my colleague uh, has been trying to get into the governor of Edo State. He got me the governor's phone number, direct phone number, his peer and all that and everything. Why? Because that is about flexibility, giving everybody opportunity including the security men, it will shock you what they will do if you're able to delegate. So for me, this is what has helped me in managing my business, what I call the DD of business, detailing and delegation. If anybody have a question, so please do ask. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Okay. So if you have a question, okay, please, this is how you type it or you unmute yourself to ask the question. So if you have a question, please just type it in or you unmute your mic to ask the question. Okay. Yeah. So, any question? Does anybody have any question or contribution? Okay. Oh, it didn't make sense today. <laughs> Yeah, good evening, Sunday, go ahead. Sunday, could you be more audible? you have one name you can miss one name or maybe you got an inspiration you know you have to detail it have to write it down so you need to always have something a pen and a paper or probably make sure that you activate your notes notebook and your phone so that you can pick up the small information that you have but it's important that you write down some of those things so that you can go back and review Business detailing is an amazing thing. It's, it's such a, a great phenomenon. If you're able to manage it well, you. A strong stock. Okay, Mr. Patrick. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Uh, one of the reasons to find out that, um, um, you know, these uh, transporters, a lot of them just couldn't um, sustain uh, from one generation to another generation because Okay, so Sunday is saying, uh, how do I imbibe the culture of detailing? I like habits. You know, when I talk about habits, habit helps you. One habit you're, you form is going to help you in your business. And that's why training children, the, the, the method of training children automatically changing because, hey, we don't force them, we empower them. When you force your children, you don't create habits because you're forcing them to comply to your own imagination and your thing. But if you form habits, if you train them by forming habits, let's say for instance, ask them to wear, um, maybe to wear their ninth gown. Uh, they have to iron their ninth gown before they sleep. You may think that does it take all that to iron to make sure that they iron, make sure that it lined up. But if they are consistent without habits, they create commitment and engagement, right? And they are consistent with it. That habit alone will help them in their business work. So how do I start? Start, let's, let's they take it one by one. Every day, when you come back from work, just do
if you if you if you just try it takes discipline that's what we'll talk about commitment and consistency uh that's why i brought it over there if you take time to record your expenses every day if you do it consistently for one month and you see the benefits now you see it's very simple you can now progress into your liability let me even have detailed analysis of my wristwatch a lot of us just buy wristwatch we don't even know the what uh, if I want to give you a gift, <laughs> I will tell you how much the, the, that gift costs. For me, they used to think maybe, oh, yeah, I'm trying to pose. No, it wasn't posing. It's just accountability. Ability to know how much you spend, how much this was. And so you can do a total sum, a summary. A lot of us don't even know how much our business was. You, you should be able to know when you talk about uh, dango to them you say okay yeah they're worth this it's because they are giving at even old assets it's part of the book some people if you don't record them um, oh you say i bought a spoon bought a spoon record it if i asked you now to give me an idea of the total spoon you have in your house he said does it take that it takes that in in proper detailing i'll tell you where all my spoons are the ones I'm hiding. And it doesn't take anything. It's not like I'm overcrowding my sense. But it means that if you form that habit, naturally, you're also going to form. You're also going to form. It will help you manage your business. That's why I keep talking about habits, commitment, and consistency. So please, record. Take it one, one, one step. Record every money that you get on a weekly basis from your business. Make sure that Every week you review it. When you sum total it, it will amaze you how much you're spending or how much you're receiving. Does anybody have any other contribution or question? Are we there? Are we there? Thank you, welcome. Are we still on? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Does, does anybody have anything? Okay, somebody said, um, for small business that are still trying to find their footing with limited funds, striving for expansion, growth, and all, how do you manage to set apart funds to pay per self? And this is actually one of the reasons why business, small business um, don't grow. Like I said, if you measure your income, Let's say, for instance, you're selling phone and every day people come in or you're repairing phone. Now you bought all the accessories. What if you want to be employed? You're working for another person. You have to create value, three times the value in order to receive your salary. So now take like one month, record all your income, apportion them, which one? will be your salary. If you don't keep that record, you will spend money and that's a cycle. I started small as well. It's not like this is this is where, this is how the business has been. There was a time it was only me and my colleague. And so we will set aside, we pay ourselves salary consistently because you are different from the business. Even if you're selling granules, as much as possible, there's a profit. You have a capital, and the capital was supposed to give you profit. Your salary will be based on the profit. Now, I recall when we started um, uh, the company I worked for before uh, before my current company. My boss, my former boss, he was supposed to be entitled to salary, but it was not paid because we didn't have the resources to pay. So. 
what happened that after a year it was calculated and they gave him more share in the company because it was even though you are not um physically removing the money but you have to account for it but you need to be able to separate and say this is how much i earn it's also going to help you in managing your responsibility and that's why i keep saying most people will see my organization and think that i have money i do not have that money it's the company that have the money i have my salary i'm on salary so if you're expecting well, Patrick works in a big organization, sorry, they pay me salary. And so I spend money based on my salary. That's my income, my own income, and not my company's income. If you're not able to distinguish yourself over there, you have more pressure on people, even on the business. So separate yourself from the salary. Be accountable, be disciplined. That is the beginning of a, a successful business. So set, set aside small money out of the income to pay yourself a salary. The same way if you employ, engage somebody, make sure you're agreed on a certain amount and it will help them to be responsible because if you want to be accountable, you ask them, what is your value? Your value is based on what you bring into that company. So please, you can also see me. I will show you practical examples. Maybe look at what you do and and, 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 and see how I can create salary out of what you're doing from the small business. It's not really a small business, it's a growing business. I stop saying I have a small business, I say I have a growing business. Okay, so we'll just take one more question and then we'll call it a day. So John, you wanted to ask a question. John, ask a question so we can call it a day. Thank you very much. Hello. Yeah, John, we can hear you. Go on. Okay. Um, before Nana was uh, actually uh, disconnected. I think the letter was bad. Um, then you were actually talking about um, uh, commitment and uh, cons consistency, focus, head work, and character. And uh, I came in when you were actually talking about delegation. Uh, delegation, in the sense you said that you need to trust yourself to trust or entrust people to handle some um, parts. In, in the business, you are running. So uh, my uh, my question from the ones I've had, uh, I, I didn't miss some, some parts you said earlier. Uh, okay, when you are to delegate people to handle, uh, is it advisable to also uh, give delegation to some sensitive parts of the business. Like, uh, yes, it's true that sometimes if once a business has grew, we were talking about a, a small scale business, a growing business. So at, when you are starting a growing business and which you cannot handle, is it good when you employ or you delegate someone to assist in that business? Is it advisable to give uh, such a one uh, a detailed the runnings of the business and uh, some, I mean, to give the person this, some sensitive information concerning that business. I well, this is why detailing is very important because if you have a, a detailed business and a process, you can control them. But if you don't have a detailed uh, sequential order of um, how the business runs, you know, people can take advantage. And really, this is why most people take advantage of organization. Even highly organized and detailed company, they still find a way to create abnormal abnormality. One, there's abnormal um, sequence. You know, people leverage on that and to make money. Let me tell you, no matter how you look at it, you need to be able to trust yourself to put a process. So 
you know, it's not just one day. You keep trying people's character, keep trying people. If you don't give them the opportunity, you can't even develop them. You have to consciously, you know, develop them, you know, and just hoping uh, that, okay, they will also turn out. But let me also tell you how disciplined we are as managers of business. It will cascade, it will inculcate, and our subordinate will animate that. So, but if we're not disciplined, we all, they are also going to animate that to themselves. So um, you, you try it. I remember when we started, you know, Icrane, uh, my colleague wasn't signing check, but at some point in time, because she already knows the business, of course, what we're doing, it was open. Because the problem about it really, if you hide most information, thinking that you are excluding it, that is that could also kill the business because it will give the staff as we're making so much money and yet the or guy is finishing the money by himself. So you need to be able to be transparent, really. So uh, for instance, now in my organization, what we're doing now, we're giving everybody to do budgeting, to bring your budget, to bring your budget in. We all go there and review the budget and we'll look at the resource of revenue, your, your expectations. Now you already know that if you are going to spend 1,000 Naira, you're supposed to make about 3,000 Naira so that we will spend the 1,000 Naira, pay you salary, and then reserve you know, for, uh, to, to expand the business. So, but if you're not detailed and you're hiding more information from people, trust me, the secrecy trust in an organization, it brings about suspicion. So you need to try them, you need to give them a responsibility, how they respond, and that will determine how you keep unveiling and keep unveiling and keep empowering them. But just at least give them a small portion, see how they perform it, see their credibility, see their commitment, see their capability, then you keep driving them, then you keep giving them more, you keep giving them more. And that's one thing about detailing and delegation. So start small. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Patrick. So that'll be the end of today's session. Okay, yeah, so that'll be the end of today's session. So our next session will be on the 14th of November. Okay, it's going to be another business masterclass with our mentor, Mr. Patrick Udunga. So let's anticipate yeah, and plan for it. Okay, then the recording session will, will be available we'll need to if you need to go through the session again and ensure you don't miss out on any of the information that has been shared with us you can check on our youtube channel anytime this week for a recap of the session okay also if you have any more questions you can still reach out to uh, madam Chioma to reach out to mr patrick okay he's always available to attend to our questions so um, thank you, Mr. Patrick, for all you do. We appreciate all you do for, human for humanity and we appreciate all you do for us. We do not take it for granted. We really do appreciate it for the time, <laughs> for, for this knowledge you share. <laughs> if we should pay for it, we know how much we're going to be paying for it. Yeah, but you give it to us just free of charge. And then, so on behalf of everybody, I say, Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you very much. Thank Sam. you very much for coming on tonight, everybody. Um, let's do our business and make sure that we expand the business. I'm always available to help you to see your business in case um, you're struggling in some of um, in aspect of your business. Thank you very much and um, stay focused, redefine the standard, keep challenging the status quo, keep challenging the conclusion of your life, and we will be there. Is a gradual pro process. Thank you and have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, good night, everybody. Good night, Mimi. Good night, Victor. Good night, John, Millicent, Cassie, Jinwei, Daniel, Enobong, Jesse. Good night. Good night.